The Bible says that the response of the church when Peter was apprehended was that they began to make prayers. Now, making of prayers, that's our strategy. And they made it without ceasing. All right, let's do something quickly. Something quickly, then I will tell you one or two things. This is what I found as an intercessor. Someone give me Acts chapter 2 verse 15. Another person give me Acts chapter 3 verse 1. Another person give me Acts chapter 10 verse 3. Another person give me Acts chapter 10 verse 9. These scriptures that I asked us to open are scriptures that revealed moments where something from God's realm came into our own realm. Right? So I want us to do an investigation of the timing. Exactly. You know, while I was in the oil industry, we did a lot of, we, we brought a lot of cargo on uh, vessels, on tanker vessels. So I was offshore almost always, and we're doing that stuff. That's when I understood the, the dynamics of tide, tide. Because in order for us to take, fiscalize and take inventory, um, the tide must be at its peak so that our calculations will not be wrong. That's where I, I stumbled on one of the tools, which is the tidal chart, and I got a lot of insight from that. But are you, are you with me? Who, who is reading the first scripture? These men are not drunk, as you suppose. The third hour. Now, can we, what does that mean, the third hour of the day? What does it mean? Do you have a Bible that gives us insight into what time we're talking about? What? 9 a.m. So you write, write 9 a.m. Yes, next scripture. So this third hour of the day was a time that the Holy Spirit came down on the day of Pentecost. Is that clear? Right. We're, we're talking about praying without ceasing. That's, what I'm, that's where I'm going. Yes? Who has the second scripture? Acts 10, 3. At about 3 in the afternoon, this Cornelius. Cornelius had an encounter with an angel and the time of that encounter, according to human timing, was what? Three in the afternoon. That's 3 p.m. Okay, so we have the first one's what? 9 a.m. Then we have something for 3 p.m. Yes? Who is reading another scripture there? The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray. He went up on the housetop to pray. About the sixth hour. About the sixth hour. What time is that? 12 noon. That was when he had the encounter uh, that something from heaven descended and all of that and all of that. and all. So look at that very well. You see we have 12 noon. We have 9. We have 3. So it's a 3, 3, 3 hours interval. Good. So this is the technology. You want to shift. You want to move the hand of darkness back. You must start 12 midnight. You do 12 to 1, you do 3 to 4, you do 6 to 7, you do 9 to 10, and you continue running like that. If you do that, you will migrate. Keep that routine, keep that routine. Something from God's realm will come into that cycle. It's guaranteed, it's something I do. When I notice that hell has broken loose, 12 to 1. I can, if, if the anointing is still on me for prayer, I can continue. But my contract is 12 to 1. Then I can go and sleep. And then do what? 3 to 4. If the anointing is on me, I will allow it to run. Then I, I, I move again. I move again. You will see God's hand will come into that cycle. It maintain that cycle. His hand will come. That, that's how we receive angelic visitations. Create a time that is based on this routine and God will come into it. The heavens will be open. The Holy Ghost will come down and you can hear the, 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 the voice of God clearly or God will send you an, an angel. Angelic intervention is occasioned by this continuous prayer cycle. Prayer was made without ceasing from the church. A certain man of God that was in my city died. It was when he died that we knew what he was. We normally see him on pulpits and in the crusade. And he has, he, he does this crusade, annual crusade that is massive. 
but we never knew what he was until he died. We never knew the kind of covering that came over the city because he was alive. It is easy for you to compare yourself to somebody. Because your estimation of the person is what you see him do on the pulpit. Ministry is not pulpit stuff. It's a call to priesthood. It will swallow your life. It's a call to an altar. And the altar is a metaphor for sacrifice. So when this man died, darkness began to come over our city gradually. I'm not saying we're not praying, no. But I'm saying that there was a capacity that that man had that made it easy for the territory. And many times, God knows that some people with capacity are about to be called home, and he begins to trouble other people to begin to take steps to migrate so that the kind of capacity they had in the spirit, the, 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 the outgoing generation, can be built in other functionaries that will still remain on ground so that darkness will not take advantage. Because I've seen cities like Benin, when a mighty apostle of God rose and he, he, he did damage to the kingdom of darkness. And when he was taken, there was nobody around that could command the kind of priesthood that he had. Guess what will happen? Darkness comes over the city and the darkness can linger. Oh, maybe there's a priest in your family, someone that is holding the fault. And many times this devil makes people not to like such people. It turns the hearts of people against such people that are holding the fault. Uh, if you understand spiritual things, you just know what is happening to you is the opposite of the truth. It will make people hate you if you're an intercessor. So you need, to, you need to love them beyond their misunderstanding and fulfill your ministry. This man was taken from our city and when he was taken from our city, darkness began to come over the land. I was in final year when he died. And I never knew that God was going to send me to that city. But we had this small prayer group. And God began to say that the time of darkness was coming. And the darkness will last until a new light will rise from among us. Do you know that the most accurate, in my own opinion, and I speak as a man, okay? The most accurate word of God in that time was not on the big pulpit. The most accurate word of God was in little prayer groups where the Holy Spirit had liberty to express his heart and God gave us that signal that the darkness was coming but we could not imagine what measure of darkness God was talking about the darkness was in the fact that somebody was about to be taken home and there was nobody on ground that understood the dynamics of the priesthood that brought light to the territory and the moment this man was withdrawn from the scene, it was obvious that the things he had built in the spirit, there was no one that knew how to chart his course through the maze of the spiritual edifice that had been built by his life in the Lord. Satan took over everything. When I started my work life after campus, I got posted to the same city. Occultic pastors had taken over the pulpit, prophesying by divination. The spirit that was at work was what Apostle Paul called Python in the book of Acts chapter 16. Priesthoods that were serviced by immorality. All kinds of gimmicks, manipulations. And it was just a few years after the man died that the intensity of darkness was so heavy. And God began to speak to me. The reason why you were posted, because from my office they posted me to that my city again. The reason why we're posted here is so that you can you can bear the candlelight. So we started praying. There were creatures like dwarfs that used to visit my house. I know you will not believe. You say, okay, this guy is from Africa. So okay. Since you won't believe, let me leave my story. <laughs> creatures like dwarfs that used to visit the room. That was a house that you might just see something. Well, this house that I'm speaking about is sealed. You know what I mean by sealed? I, I, I assure you, sealed. And then I just came out of the room and saw a frog in my living room. All right, so I, I wanted to kill it. The thing just jumped and, and disappeared. I know you won't believe it. Say, this, this, African boy, this African boy has come again. I said, what is this? 
So in order for me not to be afraid, I'll have to pray for like three hours. Then faith be stirred up. Faith will be stirred up. I was very, very single then. So all I knew how to do was walk. And when I come back from walk, prayer. I continue. I continue. My neighbors now saw me praying and started joining me. People heard my prayer and started joining. That was how we started the prayer that became the ministry I'm doing today. I was on my knees when Jesus walked through the wall and gave me six signs that will happen before the blanket of darkness over the city is taken away. Each one of them came to pass. And the last of which was that the airport that was grounded in my city that it will become functional again. That was the last, that was the sixth one. And we followed it. And the more we gained ground with prayer, the more even, even the politics in the land shifted. Prior to that time, occultic people were the people sitting on that throne. And then we got a tongue talker to sit. It was because the atmosphere priesthood had made it possible. So the devil started losing ground. Even the, even the um, traditional stools, you know, we have something called, uh, we, have, we have offices, we have administrations built around our traditions. So we have chiefs. All the chiefs in that place are tongue talkers was intercession that created the atmosphere. And this is preparatory to something major that is about to happen in that city. That's how change takes place. Prayer was made. It was deliberate. It was conscious. Without ceasing of the church. Oh, you think it's your computer that will, that will change something? The, the analysis that you're doing. We did all of that analysis in the oil industry and the darkness that was still in the land. All our projections never came to pass. All our interpolations never came to pass because of the darkness that was in the land. It was obvious that God had made us a wealthy nation, but the world could not be seen. God never intended that anyone in that land would be a poor man, but the poverty is, is, is palpable. It is because of the darkness. So when we got this and we saw that you can break from a season of darkness as an individual into light with more stature and more capacity, we now discover that you can do that territorially, that we can decide that London, Satan will pack from London. Yeah. Yes, we can decide. If you, keep, if you keep sowing the seed of prayer, you'll begin to see the day star. The morning will begin to down. Oh, some things that were possible before in the land will no longer be possible because the priests of light have come into the territory. I came, I came to charge you up. We are in the season of a watchman. We are in the season of the watchman. This you're eating. You eat chicken, eat chicken. No. Wake up. Wake up. It's time for us to migrate. Great things are determined by heaven, but it will take watchmen to download them. I've seen the power of prayer. If the power of prayer is in its consistency. Stay consistent. Even, it may not make sense. Just keep the routine. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep striking. Keep striking. Keep striking. Keep striking. And things will break. I saw the darkness of my city break. I left Supernatural Ship 2020. Went back home. The first thing that happened to me was the pressure to leave my job. I left. I obeyed God. And then I noticed that the anointing increased because I obeyed. Okay. Ah, then I preached. 80 sermons after I left here. Those 80 sermons, oh my. It was an announcement. Are you with me? And from that time, so many people across the world began to listen to me. I said, yeah. Okay. In the city where I am, in the state where I am, the economy of the state is such that it cannot capture the things that God began to do. God took us beyond the economy of the location. Such that when the governor came to our building, I'm giving him the microphone. He said, huh? He forgot himself. He, he didn't know the world was watching him. Huh? That, so this thing happened in my territory and my money is not even in it. And that was good. It was good he made that statement because people thought it was a government-funded project. Uh, he said, my money is not in it. I was so happy. I said, glory to God. <laughs> Do you know that... So <laughs> 
you can make impossible things happen in your territory. Tonight, God is going to come. See, a rain will come upon you. Yes, there is a rain that is going to come upon you because many things are going to shift. You see, if you open your heart tonight, oh my, the energy that it takes to be consistent in the place of prayer until you see a change will come upon your life in the name of Jesus. We are the ones that can change the tempo, change the situation, change the circumstance. Satan is not in control. It's not in control. It's not in control. They tried to kill me, but I'm still here. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still here. And I'm more determined than, than I used to be. This encounter with me resolved the issue of determination. If you are still here, I'd like us to take a moment in prayer. See, the prayer we are praying is that God will do something to you, to do something to me in the next five minutes that will increase your capacity, that will set you on course, on a definite course of migration. A definite course. Oh! On a definite course. Prayer was made without ceasing of the church. And things began to shift. Angels were dispatched. All kinds of things began to happen. Peter thought it was a rescue strategy. He wanted to run out of prison naked. The angel said, hold it. Put on your sandals. They said, hold it. Guard yourself. Throw your robe over your arm. It, it, it's a red carpet reception. It's not a rescue strategy. The angelic activities that are soon to be activated around your life. Oh my God. Oh my God, Simon Kolebite, Kofasito Braskeva Mante Korea. There are things that are opening up. There are dimensions that God is unleashing on your life. You are going through a migration by the Spirit of God. That is transport. That is transport. That is transport. That is transport. That is taking place. My Kobilasi. Rumbela is Koba Mande, Kuveva Vane is Kofresketa Mantoria, Amaski do Bronde Caparatus, Rakosiko Braskito Compelama, Akai Compis Cavala Mandeli, Lisco Precotiza Zanatua. There's a migration taking place. God is moving you as I speak. There is a movement. There is a movement. The tsunami of shift is coming to take over the affairs of your life what might happen might look like a dislocation but it is so that you can be relocated and brought into the full context of your destiny i see the hand of god straight forth already it's straight forth already oh god like simo ropeskadi abraske falama sika braskata boboriata is corporate things will never be the same again kaboria simo on pedla kusa akabosa sale braskai to kobelame ubreske for lombraske akuva lata kumenale sombre ke tela somalate avai to kombres kuvas kami aramas ketia bonde mahala somalate there's a shift there's a shift the lord himself the lord himself is 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 involved he's involved in occasion in this migration he's in oh my god but who say come in it it can press go for lamina ruka basute mahala tamina ruka skemina seli boboria ama marasi compress go for latwa aka press go for lamina sali go balamaita he compress go for la hasimo prehikos kabaratua Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. 